Hello there you amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new Doctor Who related video for today. So in this video it is what I'd like to see from the 14th Doctor. Now there are some loads of stuff I like to talk about in this video. So I'm going to stop sit here and tell you every little bit of detail that I'd like to see from a new actor playing the Doctor, from some of the returning villains, bring back more classic Who style sort of things and a whole brand new TARDIS in tenure. So Sit there with your jelly babies, your like screwdrivers, and let's dive into what I think about what the fourth do 14th Doctor should, should do in his era. So, talking about the 14th Doctor, I really think we should go back to having somebody older. Now, I don't really care if it's a male or female. I really personally think if we have an older person playing this fantastic character that we've been watching on our screen since 1963... Now, because Jodie Whittaker is the first female Doctor, I would actually like to say, why not a older female Doctor? Say somebody in their 50s or 60s. A bit like William Hartnell and Peter Capaldi was in the, when they first started playing the role of the Doctor. I mean, William Hartnell was 55 when he started playing the role as the first Doctor. Peter Capaldi was 55 when he took over the role as the 12th Doctor. So I would actually like to see a kind of older woman playing the next in kind of the Doctor. Or an older man, man or woman, you know. I don't really, I don't really care if it's a man or woman. I mean, I don't really want the BBC to say, "Well, it didn't really work with, as the one," because that's not the problem. I think Jodie Whittaker is brilliant as the Doctor. I just think it's just she suffers with really, really bad writing. Same with Peter Capaldi did, and Matt Smith did, even Colin Baker did in the eighties, and of course, Sylvester McCoy. I really think we should have another female version of the Doctor or a male. If I could pick and choose, I would actually like to see another older female playing the Doctor. I mean, we've had William Hartnell, we've had Peter Capaldi, and they are the two oldest people so far on this list that's played the actual Doctors for being 50, 55 when they both started. So I would actually like to sit, say, or oh, I would actually like to see an older incarnation of the Doctor. Now, the Doctor is over... Four billion years at this point, I think, because he was twelve years, um, two, two thousand years old in Deep Breath, and then, and then he was. But then adding the time he spent on Trenzalore, not Trenzalore, on the planet Delivium, and of course being trapped in the convention dial. I really think the the next Doctor should be about four 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 thousand years old. I would like to say. So talking about the script, I really think. We need better writers, better scripts. Now, yes, we've got Russell T. Davis coming back, and he wrote some good stuff with Christopher Eccleston. He wrote some amazing stuff with Eccleston. Then when he got to Davis, I'm like, what the hell's happened here? I mean, Series 1 and Series 4 are the two best RTD series I can actually honestly say that I really enjoyed. Where Series 3, I liked a little bit more. That Series 2, just like... Pfft. I'm sorry to say that, but Series 2 is a... Pfft, like that. I really don't like Series 2. I would actually like to see some better writing for the 14th Doctor. Um, no lovey-dovey stuff. Get rid of the lovey-dovey stuff. That happened since the 8th Doctor first came into... When Paul McGann became the 8th Doctor and he kissed Grace. And ever since then, it's been part of the show. And it's like, no, no. So that's another thing. So the third thing I want to talk about. I really want the Doctor to go back to his old ways when he was from William Hartnell down to Sylvester McCoy. Bring back some great stuff from the first to the seventh Doctors. I don't care if it's got some comedy like Tom Baker's Doctor or The Darkness from Sylvester McCoy. Imagine having an actor playing the darker side of the Doctor from like Wim Hartnell and Sylvester McCoy. But if you combine the two together, the Chessmaster Doctor and the Grumpy Old Man combined together, you could have something pretty dark, pretty amazing and some fantastic stuff going on with that Doctor. That's the one thing I have to say about that one. I really would like to see a darker side to the Doctor. William Hartnell had a bit of darkness when he first started, but then he kind of mellowed. Sylvester McCoy started off being a bit like mellow, then he started getting into the proper dark, gritty stuff in season 25 and a little bit of season 25, 24, and 26. So if you can have somebody that can contain the essence from. William Hartnell and Sylvester McCoy combine them in together, that would be perfect. And even if you add this, the darkness the 12th Doctor had, as well as the 9th Doctor, 
So you can actually have more of a darker doctor. I would actually like to see a darker doctor. I have to say, I would actually like to see a proper dark side. So the fifth, uh, sorry, fourth thing I want to say, have a non-human companion. Yes, have a companion that is non-human. It's worked uh, really, really well in Classico. I mean, we've had Talo, Chameleon, we had K9, Leela, Romana One, who was Romana, who was basically a time time lord as well as the Doctor's own race. We had Susan. You know, we had Catrina, Victor, um, Catrina, Sarah Kingdom that were pretty aliens, I think, and they were in the Dark's Master Plan. Adric, Nissa, you know, bring back a non-human companion. You can say they're like humanoid, like Tylo was and stuff, but have them not from Earth. That's the one thing I have to say. If you have a companion that is not from Earth, I really think people would actually be really impressed with that. That's the one thing I have to say. If you can have that, people would actually be impressed by it. And I'm really sorry to say that, but I really think people would actually be really impressed that we've not got a human from modern day Earth or an alien. If you bring in an alien... Oh, like to travel with the Doctor. I really think that would be, I would actually welcome that. It's, it's worked so well in classic Doctor Who. In modern Who, I only think the only non-human companion that we basically had was Noldo in the 12th Doctor's era. So have a non-human companion. So the next topic I want to talk about on this video is bringing back classic Doctor Who villains. Now, yeah, make some new ones or bring some new monsters back or make some new monsters but these this list is what i want to see come back make the biggest comeback and i really think the next doctor should actually do it so so far in modern who since the revival we had daleks we've had cybermen we had the macro we had the master we have had santarans the silorians the great intelligence the zygons even in the last scene we got the return of the sea devils so I've got a massive list of some Doctor Who villains I would like to say, I would like to see come back. So the first one, of course, is the Black Guardian. Now, the Black Guardian was last seen in 1983 when he burnt to, when he got on fire. But whilst there's always a White Guardian, there's always going to be a Black Guardian. And I would like to see the Black Guardian try and take their revenge on the Doctor. That's one That's one of them. I'd like to see the return of the Irani. I'd like to see the return of Rassilon because the Doctor did kick Rassilon off Gallifrey in Hellbent. I would also like to see the return of the Meddling Monk. Yes, the Meddling Monk was an actual Time Lord character from the William Hartnell era, who was basically meddling with time. So I'd like to see the 14th Doctor go back, encounter the Meddling Monk, and then try and punish him once again. Like the first Doctor, he took um, he took a piece of his TARDIS out, so his TARDIS wouldn't work for him. So that's one I have to say. Also, bringing back classic Doctor Who monsters as well would actually work if you bring back omega if you bring back the draconians ogrons from Perry, let's say if you also bring back the vardens or bring back the rutans make a rutans have a proper episode of the santarans so many great doctor who monsters i would actually like to see come back there are 43 villains i actually do want them to come back and they were all in from classic doctor who Modern Who, there's only one alien race. I would actually like to see them come back, which is the Zavine. But I can live without them. Just bring back some stuff from Classic Who, because in Classic Who, that, that generation worked. Doctor Who, Classic Doctor Who works for me all the way time. When you watch Modern Who, it's just like, there's some good stuff in Modern Who. But I really enjoy Classic Who a lot more. I have to say, I really love Classic Who a lot more than I love the modern era of the show. So that's what I have to say. Also, bringing back a classic companion. I really think if you've got a companion that people would actually properly be interested with, say if you bring back Ace, there are a ton of people that are call calling for Ace to come back. Or if you bring back Perry, or if you bring back Mal, because last time we saw Mal, she went off with several on Glitz. Or how about Tegan, or Nissa, or Talo? Go back and get some classic companions to come back in and do a story with this new Doctor, you know? I really think it would work really, really well. Daleks, have the Daleks have better stories? Because they were really, since 
Stephen Moffat's time on the show, Dave Daleks have really suffered quite a lot out of for the Moffat era. Gross Chidnall, Chris Chidnall has done three great Dalek stories, I have to say. Resolution, Resolution, Resolution of the Daleks, and of course, Eve of the Daleks. Absolutely enjoyable, but I really think the Daleks need a better writer, a better person that can handle them. Make them more menacing, make them more cunning like they did were in Classico. Make them that they are this unstoppable threat. Bring back the Sandman. Now, the Sandman, you can say they were already in this, they were in Doctor Who flocks and stuff. But hear me out. Take them out of the show for eight years. Give them an eight year rest, like they did from 1975 to 1982. Because imagine having them have the biggest comeback in eight years to encounter a new Doctor and take on the Doctor. Again, that would work. It's what, it's what made Earthshock so powerful and so great. Which is really why I like to see the 14th Doctor not encounter the Cybermen. Bring back the Cybermen after an eight year rest or something. Also, for the 14th Doctor, I would like to see a longer Doctor. Now, since Doctor Who came back, every Doctor has lasted up to three series. Yes, three series of each classic of modern Doctor Who. I want somebody to be, try and beat Tom Baker's record. If I had the opportunity to play the Doctor, I would do it for 15 years. I would never get bored of it. I want to see somebody try and take over Tom Baker's record. I mean, Tom Baker is the longest Doctor on screen. For seven years, and they're all up there. Seven years of great Tom Baker stuff. Have another, let the 14th Doctor become modern Who's version of the 4th Doctor, you know. Make him a longer Doctor, have better stories, have better scripts for him. Bring back some of the darker essence of the Doctor from from the past Doctors. Bring back the Jelly Babies flipping out. Bring back the classic line, would you like a Jelly Baby? That would throw people into the massive greatness of the show. I've got, so, so, I have at the moment got so much great stuff I want to say that I'd like to see come back because I'm, I'm going to do a video at some point of 20, of 43 Doctor Who monsters and stuff. I would like to see them come back from Classic Who and stuff. <clears throat> now, the one thing I have to say, why not have a series where you've got Daleks, Cybermen, Santarans, Anything else, like you did in Doctor Who Flux. It's the one thing about Doctor Who Flux I really enjoyed, because Doctor Who Flux, you've got Cybermen, you've got Daleks, you've got Santarans in there. Same as season, season 12 and season 22. A lot more to say about that. Two, give the Master a break for a bit. Bring, let the Master take a massive rest, because ever since the, the Stephen Moffat era, when he brought Missy in as a female version of the Master, the Master's been in every single series of Peter Capaldi's Doctor and only, only one series of Jodie Whittaker with only one break in between which is series 11. So have the Master take a three year gap, four year gap maybe before bringing the Master back. A bit like they did in classic Doctor Who from in the 70s because after Richard God had passed away we have three seasons where the Master's not even in any of them. Because you've got season 10 up to season 14. So you've got 11, 12 and 13. With no master. Let the master have a bit of a break. So we can find out what the master's plotting and cunning and everything else. Better storylines. Yes, that's one. Bring better, better storylines, you know. Cut down the episodes time. So instead of having 50 minute episodes. Which basically do try and cram in every little detail you've got in your mind. Into a 50 minute episode. Made the episodes go back down to 25 minutes, like they were in classic Doctor Who. You know, break the episodes up, or bring them into story idea and go episode 1, episode 2, episode 3, episode 4. Because PL will keep people interested in stuff, instead of just going from one adventure to the next. Oh look, it's a two-part story. Oh, then it's back to a single episode, single episode, single episode, single episode. Oh look, and it's back to a two-part. No. Make the series like classic Who. Have Five stories each season, like they did for season 8, 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. Have five stories. Split the split the stories into parts and then have them as a four-parter or a six-parter and stuff. As 
That's the one thing about classic Doctor Who that made it work. They weren't really like a big, massive whole thing. They were in parts. And that's the one way you can get people to tune in each week. Say you end on a cliffhanger. That was the one good thing about Doctor Who Flux, in my opinion. It's one of the reasons why I absolutely love Doctor Who Flux. Because Series 13, it was like one massive story being told over six different parts. And it feels like a classic Doctor Who story. So bring back stories that are not a massive story. Bring it into parts, like part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six. You know, you can't go wrong with parts, can ya? That's the one thing I want to say. And the last thing I want to say is a whole new TARDIS console room. Go back to the style of the classic era. Have the Queen walls, have the Randalls. Have a whole new TARDIS console in the middle, though. Have buttons instead of levers and stuff. That's the only complaint I have to say about Jodie Whittaker's TARDIS. It hasn't really got much buttons. It's like she's got to press lever after lever after lever. And it's like, just have buttons. Davidson's console room had buttons, you know, from the five doctors down to Battlefield, which was used for the fifth, sixth, and seventh doctors. Have button TARDIS console rooms. You can't go wrong with buttons, you know. So that's what I like to see from the 14th doctors run. Let me know in the comments what you think of this list. Do you agree with me? Have some more classic Doctor Who monsters and stuff? Or do you think that should be it? And also, what would you like to see from the 14th Doctor's era? Let me know in the comments. Please do like, subscribe and share. And have a great evening and a great day tomorrow. Carry on being mad with the subscribers. And welcome to the new subscribers. That's brought me up to 167 subscribers. Thank you for watching and have a great day.